I think you've heard this old lyric. They paved paradise and mm. put up a parking lot. That's been a running theme here in Detroit ever since our city put the world on wheels. Well, now with the extreme weather we're seeing, the parking lots and pavement all over the city really poses a big problem. So tonight, our Grant Herm shows us how depaving parts of the city could yield some very surprising results. For decades, climate scientists have been warning about climate change here in Detroit. The two biggest effects, heat stress and sickness and flooding, both of which we saw this summer and a lot of it being made worse by lots just like this one. Of Detroit's 139 square miles, 75 are impervious, and a lot of that is pavement, roads, and sidewalks. It makes sense. It's hard to have Motor City without places to drive or park. But those very same things that were drivers of Detroit's booming economy are also driving the worst effects of climate change. It just means that we're kind of feeding into this loop of warmer days, warmer temperatures, and then with, with pavement and with um, buildings and concrete, all of that heat is absorbed and then that exacerbates the, the, the climate situation. There doesn't, there's nowhere for that heat to go, in other words. That's Nick Shruck, an environmental law professor at Detroit Mercy. What he's talking about is the heat island effect, and Detroit has some of the worst in the country. Concrete and asphalt are good at trapping heat from the sun, much more than grass. In one EPA study done at the peak of summer, pavement routinely hitting temperatures between 120 and 150 degrees, compared to grass, which has been shown to be sometimes 40 degrees cooler than pavement. This map from the city of Detroit shows just how much of Detroit is pavement or hard surfaces that trap heat. More heat means more heat stress and sickness like heat stroke. Then there's all the flooding. All that hard surface means water doesn't soak into the ground and instead flows into sewers, ponds and the Detroit River, taking with it all of the chemicals and trash that collect in parking lots and streets. But there have been some groups pushing to change course and tear up the unused and overpaved places. I think in Detroit we have to grapple with the fact that we have 24 square miles of vacant land across the city and not all of that is going to be built development. Some of it has to be green space. One of those groups is Detroit Future City, an environmental group working on depaving Detroit. You know, those overpaved surfaces really heat up the neighborhoods that have less green space in them. And so depaving is one of the ways that we can help combat that. You know, you want them to be a thing of beauty as well. The first project on Detroit's west side was at the St. Suzanne Cody Rouge Community Resource Center, where Steve Wasco has been a lifelong parishioner, now a project manager there. He volunteered to depave 7,500 square feet of unused parking lot, turning it into green space hoping to make the church and center a more inviting place for kids to play and for neighbors to come together. We sit right in a neighborhood. As you can see, there are houses on all four sides of us, and you don't see any fences in that. We're wide open, and we re really want to be an asset to the community. Estimates show removing up to 10% of pavement from a city could mean as much as a seven degree drop, the difference between life-threatening heat and a pleasant afternoon. But so far, the idea hasn't caught on. It was predictable because we've known about this. These are the top two identified climate risks, you know, 20 some years ago. And, and here we are today um, looking around saying, well, what could we have done? Lots to think about there. Thank you, Grant. Some depaving projects can also be turned into things like rain gardens to collect rain, support a garden. They're also used as educational spaces to teach science and engineering to kids. Oh, that is very interesting. Oh, yeah.